much answer coming on. That brings us to the end of tonight's show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to Alex in the studio. And thank you to my panel, Madeline and Matthew. I'm back at 8pm next week. Good night for now. This is Talk TV. My friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. We're here! Good morning, everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching The Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening. I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. <laughs> me and you, conquer time. Who that wins? Happens. You. <laughs> do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? I'm so rich. <laughs> but, uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous What, you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis No, I Sanz. am not. Stop pandying to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Yeah. It's almost like those highly paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah, Thank you. there's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. The one thing Labour would be terrified of if Boris Johnson zoomed back into full focus. Boris Johnson uh, isn't what he was. Most of them seem to have given up. Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, solved. Yeah. Problem solved. Bum he's as up. fit as a butcher's dog. There you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog? Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. <laughs> the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know, I know, you're probably going to walk me off the show after saying <laughs> this girl. But <laughs> I can't say, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty. Critics, I'd say me included, <laughs> got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, yeah. Great first show, you having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man, you know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, 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 no. no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. It was a fabulous dinner until <laughs> you two uh, mooned us. <laughs> Thank God for Talk TV is not only the home of common sense, it's the only place uh, where you get the truth. I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on talk TV and radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a cow. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on talk TV. Morning. How are you? It's Christo here on talk TV. Do you know, I was thinking this morning what we could talk about and uh, which bit for the tweet would be correct this morning. And uh, I'm just moving myself into position. I think I'm a little bit lopsided today, aren't I? Uh, how are you? And, um, oh, do you know, I was wondering, do you want to talk about Nigel Farage this morning? Do you want to? Do you? I never usually ask you, but we should talk about more revelation. I'm going to write this in. More revelations 
It's from the Nigel Farage banking saga. Um, there, done. The tweet is done. Because um, that's been a bit of a whitewash, hasn't it? Honestly, why can't they just admit everything that they got wrong? They've said that there have been failings, I'd say. <laughs> Good Lord, honestly. The worst PR for a bank since probably the banking crisis. Honestly, why are banks just so awful? Honestly, why? Why are they so dreadful? Why do they stop you getting access to your own money? Why do they put on so many um, obstacles to you doing everything? Why do they want to get rid of cash? There are so many questions around banking. And that, is, that isn't that is even what I'd intended to talk to you about this morning. But I've just seen it's like made a couple of the papers still about the failings. So uh, if you want to discuss that this morning, we will. Lots else, lots more stuff that we're going to have on the menu this morning, including we've got Ebbs coming in at Kandade to do the newspapers. I've got to talk to you about one particular story which has driven me mad this week. And it's been in the news and I have personal experience of it. And we'll also talk about the latest place where the word Christmas has been banned because it's offensive to someone. I don't know who. Who's offended by the word Christmas? Why do you think people don't like the word Christmas? That Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. It sounds a bit like my name. So lots for us to discuss all here. We are live. This is Talk TV. And no, I'm not going to talk about... Wayne has already been on this morning on the test. I'm not talking about Boris Johnson's new job on the other side. So what I will say about that... Actually, I will talk about it. <laughs> Throw a stick and I'll, 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 I'll grab it. Um, what I will say about that is I don't really understand the people who are hysterical about it. It's like the people... I was once given a very good piece of advice by someone in, 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 in radio. Someone who I used to admire who turned out to be an absolutely horrific person. But it's a long time ago. And it was someone in this industry. And they gave me a very good piece of advice. When I first started, and I was absolutely dreadful, because everyone is, I did my first radio show with about two and a half minutes notice because um, it was on a major station. You'll know, you know the station I was on for years. And they'd given me a show, right? That This is related to Boris Johnson. I will get there. They'd given me a show and they said, right, you know, we're going to give you the show. And I had wanted a radio show for so long. So to be given a show was amazing. And they said, this is your start date. And the start date was a month away. So usually when you're given a radio show, you are given, you know, you, you, you do run-throughs. You know, you, you, you give it a bit of a go. Well, with some people anyway. Not with all people, but with some people. That's, that's what happens here with the people that come on, in theory. And... So we do run-throughs. Well, so I was waiting and doing my normal job as a reporter in the building. And then it was one minute to seven o'clock in the evening and I was still at work. I was packing up to leave. And the boss came down and said, the presenter who was on at seven o'clock, between seven and ten, is off. You're on. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're on. Get up there now. The news is over at three minutes past seven. Go. So at this point, you don't even have time. I'm thinking, well, I can't say no. So I went up there and did my first show. I was dreadful. I mean, I was absolutely dreadful. And also, what didn't help was that it was a very beloved presenter that I was filling in for. And I just went on and was... I mean, I started talking about David and Victoria Beckham, and not even in an entertaining way. And... Um, in the end, and they wouldn't let me as well. They wouldn't remember the producer was like, we're not going to have the text messages open for you. No, you, you don't need them today. And I thought, that's very odd. And now I realise why, because people were literally like, who is this person? And so, unfortunately, that meant that when I did start on the station proper, a lot of people were like, oh, my God, not this guy again. And it took a long time to get people to like me. And they did, eventually. But a lot of people didn't for a long time. So I was having quite a tough time of it. And I said this to this presenter who'd been there for a long time. I said, I'm, I, I'm, they just don't like me. 
they don't like me. And why don't they like me? It's really difficult, they don't like me. And he said, and he's so right, he said, yeah, but if they like you, they'll probably tune in. If they hate you, they will be there every single show. And it's true. So your ratings will be through the roof because people love listening to people they don't like. And they do. And, well, don't like and visceral hate are probably two different things. And I think at the time I was subject to some visceral hate. Now, that brings me to Boris Johnson. Um, I have a visceral hate for Boris Johnson. Last night I put out a tweet saying I loathe him. I do loathe him. I think that he's done irreparable damage, irreparable damage to British politics, irreparable damage to the country. We lost billions under him. He is a moron. He thinks with what's down his trousers rather than his brain. He is dishonest. He's a liar. He's a charlatan. He's a cheat. He is everything that is wrong. It's like they swept the floor of every single terrible thing in the human nature. They wrapped it in a sausage skin and made it Prime Minister. That is Boris Johnson to me. Horrific individual. The personification. I hate the word privilege. You know, I hate it when privilege is used in a negative sense, um, especially about someone's race. But he is the personification of privilege over talent, right? You know I've always thought that about him. I thought it before many of you did, and I was warning you for ages, and I didn't vote for him. I would honestly rather vote for a stray dog. However... I have nothing against him having a television show. Because you know what? If I want to watch him and disagree with him and be angry with him, I can. Or there's this amazing thing called the off switch. And I am constantly amazed on this programme and on others by the number of people who hate me who are there weekly, who will message to say, I hate you. I absolutely hate you. Why are you on? I'm, I, I'm never, I never want to listen to you or see you again. You're so fat and awful. All of these things, it's every week. And so I guarantee you he's going to get an audience because there will be people who are hate-watching. And there are people watching me who are hate-watching. And so uh, I, free speech means I have to, unfortunately, and it's just a fact of free speech, have people that are broadcasting and in life that I don't agree with and I don't like. So I can either watch it and disagree with them and not like them, or I can turn over. So that is the point. I think there's a wider conversation to be had about the credibility of politicians becoming TV stars. Um, I say that with caution. Um, I do think there is a wider conversation to be had about that because I'm worried that um, Matt Hancock being a really big example of this. Um, I do worry about people going into politics thinking, oh, great, I'm going to get on Strictly, or, oh, great, I'm going to get a TV show. And I don't know whether we want people going into politics for that. But let's be honest, it's happening already. And they're all repellent. They're, they're all, they all are. There are so few of them that you look at and you think, oh, God, what great people. I mean, when would you ever look at them? There's absolutely no one now... Is there anyone? Is there actually anyone? They do say, actually, that politics is showbiz for the ugly. But I think that's an insult to ugly people, actually. I think that's really insult. I, I think I have more respect for the ugly than to say that. I mean, is there anyone? Do you look at anyone nowadays? Of course, Boris is the worst. Oh, I'll tell you who else is the worst. The two sides of the same coin, and as you'll know, you, you know exactly who I'm going to say. Who else do you think I think is as bad as Boris? Uh, you can guess. Like, you can guess. Who else do you think I think is as bad as Boris? There's only one other. And if you don't know, then you haven't, you haven't watched me for long enough. So you can guess. But um, if you could think of... Is there anyone? I mean, genuinely, is there anyone? Anyone? That you look at, you go, yeah... They are a great person. They, they, they have my interests at heart. Who do you even look at now? I mean, you can watch Question Time now. And that's something I hate watch now. I love it because I hate it. I love it because I just... I mean, maybe I'm so emotionless now that it's just nice to have some sort of emotion that I watch when I watch something. Mind you, I get emotional at sort of Big Brother. I used to get emotional at the X Factor. 
Um, God, I was emotional. I've start, you know, I've started watching Strictly now. I've sort of got over it because I want to be on Strictly so much that I couldn't watch it for about a decade. Now I think I realise that they're not even going to put me on as the fat one that's the joke. You know, they're not even going to hang me from a high wire in a tutu. I need to just get over it. And um, so I watch it now. And I was crying. <laughs> that my, my partner is just looked and just think, there is actually something wrong with you. You know, the dance was over and it was Adam Thomas and his brothers were there and there was a VT going, oh, we're all really good brothers and we all really have each other's back and, you know, our dad wasn't around so we love each other. And I was, but he hadn't even danced yet. I was, oh, my God. They're brothers. They, they get on so well. Uh, so, you know, it made me think about calling my brother. I thought about it anyway. Um, so, <laughs> you like him then, Boris Johnson... Yeah, thanks. Um, Sue says, spot on, Chris. That's why I watch Jeremy Kyle every morning. Love you, though. You see? Now, do you think that the bosses of Talk TV are thinking, oh, my word, they're watching Jeremy Kyle and they hate him? No, they're just thinking, great, you're watching Jeremy Kyle. That's, that's, that's what it's all about, and it's good. So that's good. Um, 0344 is the number to call. No one has guessed, by the way, who the other Boris person is that I hate. Um, if you do, then you can, if that makes sense. Yeah, if you do, you can message me. I, I should have probably finished that sentence for you. Uh, I feel a bit all over the place this morning. Do you know why I'm a bit all over the place? It's nice to see you, actually, because I get to tell you all of this stuff. I hope you've had a nice week. Oh, I have two words to say to you that I have been experiencing this week. Two words. Car insurance. This is the week that I sort out my car insurance. My car insurance expires, I think it's at the end of the first week of November, so that sort of time. It's about two weeks before, you know, you start getting the quotes together and all of these things. It is infuriating, it is annoying, it makes you want to throw something out of the window. It makes you want to do a Brian Harvey and run yourself over with your own car, doesn't it? <laughs> how did he do that? Did we ever work out how he did that? It's very difficult to run yourself over, like to actually get out of the car quickly enough while it's still moving to get under the car. I mean, I, I mean, he was actually—I I don't say that as a joke. He was quite seriously hurt, if I remember rightly. Um, but I almost took inspiration from that because it's so frustrating trying to sort out your car insurance. And I have gone back and forth, up and down, right and left, here and there, honestly, and it's still not fully sorted. So I'll explain more about that because actually that's been in the news this week and I would like you to call about that. But also um, we'll talk about why Christmas has been banned. As well. There's loads to discuss this morning and we will do more of that. We'll find out what you've got to say next right here on Talk TV.
Morning, Christo here on Talk TV. So I, I've got to tell you what I've been doing this week, and then we'll talk about Christmas. Why? You know, they always say that these these Christmas stories, like an urban myth. Oh, Christmas is never bad. It's been banned somewhere. So ridiculous. Um, car insurance, right? So my car insurance was up, right? And why is there no rhyme or reason to car insurance? Are you sick to death of being fleeced by these people? Car insurance is the biggest scam going. They are able to discriminate, firstly. I know they say, oh, we don't discriminate. Of course they do. Men always pay more for their car insurance. Now, that is discrimination. Why are you allowed to lawfully discriminate when it comes to car insurance? I don't know, but they can. Also, your age. That's ageism. Now, I understand why younger people might pay a bit more, because they, they would have a, a smaller driving record, right? But my car insurance should be based solely on my driving record and factors like where I live and claims I've made. If I live... So I don't mind paying a bit more because I live in south-west London. Fine. But I've got 20 years of no-claims bonus, right? 20 years of no-claims bonus. I drive a car. It's a nice car. I mean, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a nice car. But, I mean, it's not. The, it's, a, it's a BMW 3 Series, all right? It is not, like, it's not a Plymouth Rolls Royce. It's not a Range Rover. It's a nice car, a couple of years old. It's a nice car, you know? But it's not the most amazing car that's ever driven th the streets. And my car insurance was £1,100 last year, and it was up to knocking on £1,800 this year. Another year of no claims bonus, no claims whatsoever. I've not moved, and it has gone up by six or £700. I mean, I think it went to 17 50 something like that. I mean, I nearly fell off my chair. And so, and that's to pay monthly, because I pay monthly now for 1100 and, and it was going up to 1700 if I wanted to pay monthly. So I did a jig, you know, you need, when you do a rejig and you rechange and you take someone off, because my dad was on it in case he ever needed to, to use my car for anything, so I took him off and did a bit of this and did a bit of that, changed the excess and all that stuff. And I got it down to £1,200 if I paid for it up front, right? Now, that's a lot of money to lay out two months before Christmas when your tax bill's due in January. But I did it. I paid it out. And then my current insurer came back and said, oh, did you get a cheaper quote elsewhere? And I sent it to them. I said, yes, look, £1,200. You're the ones that are charging me £1,700. Oh, well, we'll match it. I said, well, I don't care. I've paid for it elsewhere now. Oh, but you want to pay monthly. We'll match it and you can pay monthly. Well, I said, well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Oh, well, you didn't have another alternative quote. I said, but you could have just told me that anyway. And yes, I would like to pay it monthly because I've paid out this £1,200 and it's run up to Christmas and I've got my tax bill in January. I'd really rather not pay out £1,200 now because, um, you know, that was kind of the mortgage. So then they said, oh, yeah, yeah, so you can go monthly. So then I had to go back to the new insurers and cancel that insurance. Now I'm waiting for my refund from them and go to my current insurer and go back to paying monthly with my current insurer on a different rate because it has gone up a little bit, rather than the new insurer. The amount of time this stuff takes out of your day and out of your life. And my current insurer could have just done it for me cheaper anyway. And also, I was doing this all for a chat thing online. And I'm sure I wasn't talking to a human. I'm quite sure that Eloise, the chat person, was not a person. I don't think Eloise exists. I don't think that she is a... Well, I say she. They. Because I did actually just presume Eloise's gender identity and actually the fact that she has organs and is a human being. It's so frustrating. Why? Why is car insurance such a scam? And what has been your experience? Because I feel your pain this week. Apparently, car insurance has been in the news this week, actually because it is so astronomical now. Um, and uh, Martin Lewis says you should fight back. What do you mean, fight back? Premiums have gone up by about 48% on average. That's, that's about right. And um, people are saying it's like a ransom. It really is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Also, why do they want to know if I'm married? 
Why do they care whether I'm married? Why do they want to know if I own my own home? What's it got to do with them? Nothing. None of that's got to do with them. Do you think that I'm distracted when I'm driving? Oh, got that mortgage payment smash. Oh, no. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And you are right, by the way, some of you, about who else I hate in politics. Um, it's not Phileas Fogg, Bog. I quite like Jacob Rees-Mogg. I mean, he's clearly a repellent and awful person, but I have a secret liking of him um, in a weird way. i tell you why, because he actually does at least give an opinion, and it might not be a popular opinion, and I, I respect that more nowadays than agreeing with someone. But you are quite right, Jess and any of the others, Michael in Yorkshire, many of the others, you're right, it is Sadiq Khan that I absolutely loathe. Uh, OK, um, let's talk to Linda. Hello, Linda. Morning, Christo. How are you this morning? I'm really well, thank you. Good. My blood pressure is very high. I don't drive, so I don't have that problem. Oh, well, I may run myself over with my own car. I think it's the only way forward from now on, Linda. I was born to be driven. You were born to be driven. Linda, oh, you're so right. Why isn't that me? I don't know. Why aren't I my dogs, who have literally a beautiful... Um, not only is it a leather interior, but I had to buy, because my dogs are absolutely a nightmare, right? So I had this I have this leather interior in the car and I wanted to keep it nice, so I bought this canvas cover for the back seat. And the little madams, when they get on the back seat, they, they use their put and they, they claw the canvas thing so that it folds under so that they're on the leather because they don't like the canvas. So now I've had to buy this plush thing for the back seat so it's lovely and soft so that they're on that, so that they are still on the back seat. The point is, they get driven around like two lady mucks on the back seat and I'm the one, stressed out, paying for the insurance, hating life. Hey, God, I've just had to untangle my cat from the curtains, so I feel your pain as they're clawing. Did, why did you try and climb up the curtains? She always does. She's currently scratching my sofa and she knows that because I'm on the phone to you, I can't shout at her. Oh, they're just, they, they're just little... Tinkers, they are, aren't but, they? They, but we wouldn't be without them. No, though, I, I wouldn't. Though. I wouldn't, but they are they are an absolute... No, Do you know my dog, Dolly, right, this week? I've got to tell you this. I'm sorry, I, I know you didn't call to talk about dogs. <laughs> but I had to take a photo of it because it's so hilarious. Right, so um, I was making a casserole this week. So I went to buy all the veg, and because I was going out in the car, I thought, well, I'll take the dogs out in the car and I'll go to Clapham, to the common on Clapham, because the veg shop is in Clapham and I don't like leaving him in the car unless I can see the car. So there's a little corner shop that I go to in Clapham to get the veg. So that's why we were driving to Clapham Common. So we drove to Clapham Common, parked right by the common, went in and Dee Dee... My bigger dog loves the common. She's like a proper dog. She likes to sniff around. She likes it. Dolly is a little shih tzu and she doesn't want to go for a walk, right? She hates going for a walk. She gets angry at the thought of going for a walk because she just wants to sit at home and cuddle up. And when she deigns to go out for a, to do her business, she'll go in the garden, right? So mm -hmm. we get into the park, right? She does her business. Then I, I walk on, walk through to the common and... Um, Dee Dee sniffing around, having a whale of a time, absolutely loving it. And I look behind me and I can't see Dolly. And Dolly is literally miles away. She sat about 20 yards into the park. She sat there and she's not moving. So I call her, she's not moving. And I call her again, she's not moving. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling her like Billy O and she's just sat there looking at me and I think she's stuck, is there something wrong with her? And then... She gets up, she turns her back on me, and she walks back towards the car. And then she just sits by the car door. And I'm thinking, well, you're beside a road now. I've got to leave the park, so I have to grab Dee Dee, who's having a whale of a time, go back to the car. And Dolly was basically saying, absolutely not. I'm not having this. I will not be in this park. I'm going to sit beside the car because I am ready to leave. I quite like Dee Dee. I think I'd behave in the same way. Well, in the park, you mean? Yes, I don't want to be in the park. I just sit by the taxi rank and wait for my taxi. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what she does. It's it's just, it's just it's just unbelievable. And I was like, you're not a dog. There's something wrong with you. How do you not like the park? You're a dog. I don't know, but Christo, who's banning Christmas? Tell me. Oh, who's okay, yeah, Christmas? sorry. 
um, we right. did get sidetracked. Just trying to get, you know, back on track. Yeah, thank you. Someone <laughs> should on this programme. You're very good. But you'll be in this chair by next week. <laughs> be honest we've tried everyone else okay um the bose museum so this is a museum that was founded by the late queen mother's family right yeah and um it's durham is where it's based and the bose museum have got rid of its annual christmas market and called it a winter market instead why they're saying it's because they're hoping it will bring in more visitors instead. Rubbish. Um, Rubbish. And that that was why they're going to do this. And actually, it's been met by some people who are very, very angry about it. But the mm. museum's director, Hannah Fox, said they haven't cancelled Christmas. We have a very popular seasonal programme of events and the market is the centrepiece. However, they're all celebrated over the festive season, so therefore we're not going to call it Christmas anymore. She who's didn't say that, but she just said that that's why it's celebrated over the festive season. But who's ever... Seriously, you hear this, and like you say, it's usually anecdotal stories, or it's organisations like this that think that somehow people are offended or won't go somewhere because of the word Christmas. What a load of rubbish. I mean, I've had, I've got friends and I've worked with people of all faiths and none. I have never once heard anybody who is offended by somewhere using Christmas. You only ever hear about it in statements just like the one you've read out in case somebody's offended or because people, oops, I'm a cat screaming at the back door now. Oh. Um, yeah, so, um, or because they're um, thinking that people will come because they're going to call it a winter festival. I mean, come on, Christo, it's stupid. It is stupid. And also, do you know what is irritating about so many of these stories is... Because I don't think anyone actually cares if you want no. to rename something not from being Christmas. And bear with me, because there is a there is a grain of a point in here somewhere that I'm going to get to. <laughs> but we'll see. but the uh, the thing is, right? If 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 you want to get rid of the word Christmas, get rid of the word Christmas, right? Commercial decision. I could say, right, well, I don't want to go there anymore, or you're idiots. But the point is, I dare you to do that with Eid. Uh huh. I dare you. I dare you to say we're not going to have that word. Of course you wouldn't, because and, and that's because you, 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 there, there would be such a backlash. And so either do it for everything or do it for nothing. That, that's why I think people actually get annoyed. All it does is sow division. That's all it does. And it makes people think, oh, well, you know, why do they come to this country if they don't want to celebrate Christmas? People aren't really thinking that, though. This is all about sowing division, making it people think that somebody might be offended. And it's absolute rubbish. Well, and it's, you're, you're, you're right. And it actually probably does a disservice to the very people that they think that they are mm -hmm. going to be offended, many of whom we all work with, we all spend time with. There are all sorts of different nationalities and cultures that we all, you know, rub along together with. I've never heard one person from a different yeah. culture say, oh, oh, the C word. I mean, there are a few other C words that are banded around <laughs> when I'm in the room, but it ain't the word Christmas, I tell you. And so, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sure they're not talking about me. But I, I absolutely, I get where you're coming from. And the way I mm. see it, OK, I was christened greek orthodox right mm -hmm. and so i'm i'm in the christian faith um if i were to be in a faith at all but i kind of think it's all a bit nonsense right and every year i've got to go and, I, and this used to annoy me and i used to be a bit more militant about it i'm not now because i've softened a bit in my older age but every year i've got to go to st albans and see my mum and dad and do greek easter and be all Easter, Easter. And my mum and dad take it quite seriously. My mum, you know, mm -hmm. she, when I walk in, she says, Christos Anesti, which means Christ is risen. And I have to say, Alathos Anesti, which is the response to that. Yes, yes, I am named after Christ and Christ is risen. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I kind of think it's all nonsense, but I don't say, oh, well, I'm offended. 
I'm not, I'm not going... But it's more, it's more tradition, though, for you. It's more about tradition. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of come from. It's tradition. I love Christmas. I mean, I've already done my Christmas shopping. I love Christmas. Oh, I've started mine, actually. How are you getting oh, I'm on? done. I'm done. You're done? I'm completely done. I finished yesterday. Done. Wow. And now I can just enjoy all the festive lights and just enjoy it and sit drinking my coffee and watching everyone else panic. Yeah, I, I do it quite early. I've started. I've got my mum's stuff, what I'm getting her. I get my dad the same thing every year. I get him a hamper. Um, nice. Oh, nice. I, I, every year I get him a game pie, some chutneys, a few oh, cheeses. It's an M1, isn't it? Say that again. It's a Fortnum and Mason. No, 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 one, no, no. I put it together oh. myself. I put it together oh. myself. Oh, I, was, oh so, I really, so I really want one of them. I get a uh, a basket and I put sort of straw in the bottom and then I go and buy... The, the, the game pie is from Fortnum and Mason, you're right. Um, mm. I used to get the game pie from Borough Market, but they don't do them so much anymore now because apparently there's something to do with Brexit and 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 the... I can't remember if she told me one what, day. Well, they, ban, they banned Christmas as well? No, they haven't, but there's something about the shooting, the cartridges that might end up in the in the game, so they can't what? sell the game pies in Borough Market so much anymore. But uh, it's I don't all know right in Fortnum was... and Mason's. So I get, can... I, get them a, I get him a game pie from there. He loves nuts, so I go and get him a load of nuts. <laughs> I go to Borough Market and get him a load of cheeses. I get him some salamis, and I get him a different one every year. Because my dad, being Greek, his favourite lunch or dinner actually is sort of bread with chutney and salami and cheese and all of that yeah. sort of stuff. He's, he's My mother-in-law is Spanish. Right, okay, so that's very Mediterranean. So I get him... Yeah, but she thinks that the Greeks stole the olives, so... No, no, Greeks don't... invented everything. Yeah. Greeks invented pizza, Greeks <laughs> invented everything, so you <laughs> need to put her straight on that and tell her that. I will. Um, <laughs> And so that I know what I'm going to get, and that's that's the one I have to do the day or two before, so that the, the, it's all kind of fresh. Um, but yeah, I've I've done a couple of things. I've done a couple of things already. All done. My, I only really buy presents for my husband, and then all the kids in our family are all adults now, so they just want money or vouchers. And then my friends' children, who are still quite young, I take them somewhere. So I'm taking one to see Frozen. So basically, all the stuff I want to do, but just need a kid to do it with. That's so a, I just that's use useful. them. Yeah. That's yeah. very useful. <laughs> just do they what know you want. I do. use them. They're quite happy yeah. with being used. I, yeah. I, they know. They're aware of the situation. Yeah. That's so everyone's happy. Very, very good call. My niece is the difficult one this year because she's seven oh. and she's got so much stuff. That, Take her out somewhere, Christo. Yeah, but I sort of still think that it's nice to have something to unwrap. I'm sure she'll have a lot to unwrap. I don't know, maybe I'll get her a couple of little things. Or I was thinking of maybe some, like, a nice winter coat and some books and some bits and bobs rather than, books. like, the Barbie dream house, which is... Does she read books? I don't know, she will do. Um. When I... <laughs> because going back to what you were just saying about doing stuff for yourself... Um, yeah. So last year, I went a bit crazy and I bought her the Barbie private jet. Nice. The Barbie Fiat 500. Nice. Um, Ken, and I don't know if you were listening to me last year, I had terrible trouble with Ken last year. Because oh. um, Ken, the only one I could find was Ken in a wheelchair. Um, I, I had to try, I'm, I'm with you, because I had to try and find, for my friend's little girl, a uh, brown Barbie with rainbow hair. Oh. That's very specific. I found it. I found it. So that's a that's, that's a black lesbian Barbie, isn't it? Or is the rainbow? It could be trans. <laughs> no idea. She just really wanted it, so she got it. I didn't know the LGBTQI plus the B stood for Barbie, but there we go. We know now. <laughs> <laughs> no. We've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole yeah, today. Yeah, but I'll tell you something, but the problem I had with wheelchair Ken, right, I've no problem Nothing. with Ken being in a wheelchair, but the wheelchair wouldn't fit in the Fiat 500. Oh. So then I thought we were going to have this strange situation where Ken's going to have to leave his wheelchair behind when she's driving him around. And what message does that send? Ken won't be able to get out the car. Well, it's about we need Barbie needs to be more accessible. Yes. They need to think about accessibility. And don't even start me with getting the wheelchair on the jet. Oh, I won't. Yeah, because that was a nightmare too, because you can't get the wheelchair onto the jet, because, you know, and you're you know what the bad... Your, you, you, well, you're not allowed to take your wheelchair onto the plane exactly. anyway. They, you have to have one of theirs, and then they kind of lift you over, and then you've got one of those things that go down the aisle so you can go to the loo if you're lucky. Absolutely. So, you know, the baggage handlers would have had to have taken the, 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 the wheelchairs. How to get Ken on the jet? So it, 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 was a, it was a minefield, is what I'm telling you. 
Um, <laughs> nice to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Have you. a nice morning. You take Bye. care. That's Linda Bye. in London. We did go down a rabbit hole, didn't we? We've got loads of other calls. I don't know why I spent so much time with Linda, but I was enjoying that chat. Um, it should always be Christmas in this country, says Simon. 58 shopping days to go. Thank you. And lots of you angry about car insurance and the likes. We'll get back to that as well. All here live on Talk TV. <laughs> Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening. I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored, in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. <laughs> ah. Me and you, conquer time. Who Bye. wins? You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? I'm so <laughs> rich. But, uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis Sanz? No, I am Sanz. not. Stop pandering to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Well, it's almost like those highly done. paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. The first thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah, Thank you. That's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. The one thing Labour would be terrified of if Boris Johnson zoomed back into full focus. Boris Johnson uh, isn't what he was. Most of them seem to have given up. Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, solved. Yes, yeah. Problem solved. He's as fit up. as a butcher's dog. There you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog? Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. <laughs> the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know, I know, you're probably going to boot me off the show after saying <laughs> this girl. <laughs> Get around! Man. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty. Critics, I'd say me included, <laughs> got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. We have indeed, yeah. <laughs> Great first show, you having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. <laughs> I think it's only room for one king, man, you know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, 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 no. no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to go. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. It was a fabulous dinner until <laughs> you two uh, mooned us. <laughs> Thank God for Talk TV. It's not only the home of common sense, it's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Morning. We've been talking about two of the most repellent industries that exist, car insurance and banks. Banks, because of Farage being debanked, and apparently they acted lawfully and they did worry about reputational damage, but that had nothing to do with their decision. Oh, yeah, I believe that. Oh, look, there's a pig that just flew past the window. And also car insurance, because apparently um, the premiums have gone up by about 50%, and it just so happens... I actually sorted mine out about 12 hours ago. So, um, about 12, 13 hours ago. And it was such a ball ache all this week, going back and forth between insurers and doing Go Compare. And also, if you if you've been on Compare the Market or Go Compare, it's like being in a in a stalker-based relationship. Because you, you put in your details to get a claim and to you know to do a do a, do a comparison and they constantly have you done your comparison have you done it hello it's us hi leave me alone eric is in norwich hi eric uh morning crystal will be fine i'm fine thank you so car insurance yes i know mine went up um by over 48 percent this year um on 
uh, one of my cars, which I've just got rid of, and that was um, that went up from. I know we do about a thousand miles in a year. I went up from uh, 185 pounds to uh, I think that was over 285 pounds. Why did they give you any reason why? No, they didn't. They don't know. Well, I did ask, and uh, I, I was I was sort of a bit disgusted. So I, I thought, well, I can't really afford to run two cars. I just bought um, a little sports car, and it's okay. And just that's one of my my dreams from years ago, and I got it, and didn't really enjoy it too much. So I got rid of it. My son bought it. But oh. I'd just like to say about the uh, the road tax, they crept that one up on us. They put that up by mine up by over eleven percent as well. And there's only twenty uh, there's only twenty percent of the tax, or less than that which actually goes on the road build, which I, I found extraordinary. Well, yeah, because it's now, remember, it's the emissions-based tax, which means, you know, it's green, so we can tax you more. Yes, but the other thing is you pay that tax, of tax if that's, you, you're paying that on, on your, your, your fuel, you know, your petrol, your diesel, yeah. you pay that tax on that if it's a, if it's a big car, so that's, that's a double whammy, really. And also, because um, it's not called road tax anymore, What's it, it's called, I think it's called, uh, hang on, it's vehicle em emissions duty. Yeah, oh God, it changed. That. I didn't realise. That. Yeah, oh, it's, it's not been called road tax for ages. It's called, hang on, vehicle excise duty. That's what it's called. Vehicle excise duty, which depends primarily on the official CO2 emissions of the car. Oh, right, I didn't realise that. God, they, oh, we're, we're supposed to be uh, in the government of low taxation, but this must be... We must be the highest tax country in the world now, as you imagine. And, but do you know what they've done with mine, right? Nope. Um, is that... And this is so unfair, I believe. So it's based... It's called vehicle excise duty, based primarily on its emissions, right? I bought a second-hand car, right, that was about a year old. Yep got a really good price on it. I got so much money off what it would have cost brand new by buying it a year old and I got a really good part exchange deal on my old car so I thought this is actually a really good decision. And then uh, I, I went to tax it, right? And my tax went up from my previous car, which was about, I think something like 12 or 13 quid a month to £40 a month. Um, my tax, my, ta my my vehicle excise duty on my car is knocking on about five hundred pounds a year, and that's because brand new, the car costs over forty thousand pounds, and brand new cars that cost over forty thousand pounds, pay five hundred pounds a year tax for the first five years. Even if you bought that car second hand and you weren't the one that bought it from, because my car costs nowhere near forty thousand pounds to buy. But because it's someone paid forty thousand pounds for it, I have to pay for the next until it's five years old, five hundred pound a year excise duty. Well, that's tax. I mean, that's tax by the back door, really. Here it I mean, is. That's, just, that's, that's kind of, that must. I mean, that's a tenner a week. That's forty pounds a month. That's quite a lot of money. Yeah. Me. It is, but also, I sort of get it. If you're buying the car for over 40000 and you're the person who buys it, then fine, you know, you have to pay your tax. But I, I was buying a car that wasn't anywhere near £40,000, but because, <laughs> because at some point it cost over £40,000, I'm stuck with it. They are a word I won't use, but it's similar to Christmas yeah. in one of the letters anyway. Yeah, well, my set of tax on my car, I just bought um, my... Uh, my wife had, wife had an accident in ours, uh, and none, that wasn't a fault, but we got another one, and that's, that's quite a bit more as well, you know, you just you just can't win, can you? Yeah, and also, if you have an accident, you're right, if someone could come out of nowhere and hit your car, and it'd be not your fault at all, they could be drunk, off their heads, and blind, and your car insurance goes up! Well, that's exactly what happened, so yeah. I just got in front of my wife, and she couldn't stop in time, and... Uh, and now they put they they slung another ninety five pound. I don't really changed the car for some reason. Uh, I I don't know whether the car I got was a more sporty car, but it's an old oldy sort of Mercedes. It's thirteen fourteen years old. But, yeah, but still yeah. they will fleece you. They will fleece you, and it is a nightmare. Eric, I feel your pain. Thank you, I really do. Um, Jackie, on the subject of the people that we vote for or loathe. In Parliament, 10% of MPs are under investigation for serious alleged offences. The place is a cesspit. Which other place of work has so many accused? Drain the swamp. Well, there's a part of me that thinks it's absolutely disgusting and hideous and awful and foul and repellent and, you know, they get away with blue murder and they end up very well compensated at the end of it. 
the other part of me makes me want to stand as an MP. I just think, what a great job. You can literally do nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, so there we go. Uh, morning, Christo. It should always be Christmas in this country. 58 shopping days to go. Like I said, I've got some of it done. I've done a couple of the nieces and nephews as well. You know, I just get them smellies. They're like little perfumes and things like that. But um, oh, it is a nightmare, isn't it? To Portsmouth now and Harry. Hello there, Harry. Oh, yes, hello there, uh, Christo. Uh, you're talking about the insurance? Yes. Um... I did ring you about, I don't know, about five years ago on talk radio, and you weren't very sympathetic to my my plight, but... Um, oh. So I'm not sure whether I should be sympathetic to you, but I'll, I'll allow that one to pass. Right, what was I not sympathetic? No, no, let's get it out. You clearly want to get it out, so come on, Harry. What was, well, I, not, what was I not sympathetic about? Come on. Yeah, what, what happened was, yeah. five years ago, I, I told you that... I, when these MPs changed the law... And they're bad. They're 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 bad at informing people. As, as your last caller was talking about, what is it called? Excise, road fund license, whatever. Yeah. You know, they pass the laws, and then about a week before something happens, the publicity comes out. They changed the law where you have to have continual insurance. Way back in about I don't know when it was about four, fourteen, thirteen. I can't remember now. So that you couldn't you couldn't have a car parked off the road that never went near the road it was parked off the road unless you had continual insurance and i ended up swapping you know buying a second car and because this law had come in i thought well i've got to have continual insurance on the one i'm using even though it's this one is parked off the road i'm getting the train to buy this other car and i'll have to insure this other car over the phone when i buy it so I ended up with two insurances, and I don't know what happened. You weren't sympathetic, and I quite understand why you weren't. But what's but the, I, why, I, what, what was the problem? So you had two insurances. What was the problem? Yeah, on two vehicles. But I scrapped one of them. The old one I scrapped within a, a week or two. Yeah. But what happened was I got stopped by the police some months later, and they said, you've got no insurance. And I said... Yes, I have. And what had happened was, because I'd done... Because these stupid MPs changing the law, I'd ended up with two insurances. But when it came up for renewal, I didn't realise that the insurance company was sending me renewals for my old vehicle and, and not the new one. So you in, you reinsured your old vehicle rather than reinsuring the new yes. vehicle? They kept sending me the, the, the you know... Oh, the, so you got yourself with, in a bit of a pickle. But I'm not very sympathetic about that. That, that. that does sound like a genuine oversight rather than you trying to not have insurance. Well, you said I should have read the document, because obviously... The well, document, you should have read the document, in letters, fairness. The tiny letters, they use... They put your registration number in tiny letters. Now, the government changed it on their documents. Now, the government documents have your registration in big letters. But the insurance companies didn't at that time. I mean, time. The, the one thing I think I would have said is if I had two cars and I got an insurance thing through, but you didn't have two cars at the time, I would no. probably I would probably check that the registration is correct. But, yeah, it was an easy yeah. mistake. It was a genuine mistake rather than yeah. you were trying to diddle it. Did you get yeah. fined? Oh, well, no. The first time, this time, Chich this was at Chich lay by at Chichester, the, the, the towaway lorry turned up, and I, luckily I was carrying my documents with me in the car. I had a habit, if I thought I was travelling, to just put some documents in the car. So I was sat in the copper's car there. I'd go to my boot, get out the uh, relevant documents. Luckily, I, the, it was everything was there. And it, I explained it to him. We, he, we I phoned up uh, my insurance room within the cop car so he could hear the conversation going on and uh, they said oh yes yes well you've um, you know boiled down to the fact I had a different I didn't have the right car insured but the copper was understanding about that and I remember saying at the time because it was to do with continuing yeah, insurance that, that, as does, well. that does sound like you should have had a bit of leniency and I'm glad you did so what, anyway so your, yours has now gone up again well, what happened was I, I gave up my car five years ago because I was sick to death of every time. These people who complain today, I was getting this aggro way back in 06. My brokers were taken over by a massive big insurance company, and I thought they were honest. But every year, my insurance premium just kept jumping and jumping and jumping. 
Whereas for years, I've hardly had... In fact, my, my premium didn't go up for about five or six years with the broker. As soon as I went with a big insurance company, because they bought up my broker, it went up. At the time, in about 06, my sister, eight years older than me, was paying lower insurance than me. But that's because there's sexual it, discrimination in insurance, and they say well, now that they're not allowed to. No, they've stopped that. The no, 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 that's a, that's, but that is not true. They, they, yes, they stopped it on paper, they stopped it, but men have still consistently kept playing higher premiums than women uh, since they stopped it. So, well, I think that's fair enough, because that's the only thing I, I, I agree. Why is that, that fair women enough? should get lower quotes. Why? Because they they don't they don't put so many claims in. If you no, don't no, but that's nothing to do with you. That's nothing to do with you. It's how no, many know, claims it, you've put in that it should only yes, matter. Know, insurance should they, be sexless. They're picking the like my life. They're going across the entire country, aren't they? Taking yeah, averages. but that why why that's nothing to do with that. If I were I to do that I in don't. any other, imagine that I was selling a product to I don't know uh, uh, someone who. There was a risk factor, I don't know. OK, say that there was a... a, a I was giving someone a loan, right? I was a loan yeah. company. And I said, oh, well, actually, across the country, there is a, a, a higher rate of loan fraud among black people. So, therefore, you're black. I'm going to charge you more interest for your loan. Everyone would be outraged. Everyone would say, well, hang on. You, yes. you can't do that. You can't look um, at the, the um, whole stats across the country, decide what price that you're, I'm paying, because that's, got, I've, that's discrimination. That's nothing to do with me. But why are you allowed to do that in car insurance? I don't know, but don't, aren't media people and people like doctors always paying higher premiums yes. because they're considered a bigger risk? Yeah, I don't... Why? What do they think I'm doing? I mean, I'm sat I in a know. studio. Do they think I'm drag racing? I might be in <laughs> drag, but... You have to put down. You don't do my mountaineering or driving up up the highlands on that five hundred um, highlands. The, the, the other road thing is, I'm too honest. I, I tell the truth. Ah, that's the problem yes, as well. See, I tell that's the what truth. What happens with me? You see, another thing. Do you remember that legal expenses add-on came in a, about ten? Yeah, I just added 10, that 15. on. They added it on. Now, twenty-five years ago, I collided uh, mirror to mirror with this blasted Range Rover bloke who. Hadn't pulled over. I'd pulled over the park, yeah. uh, go past the st one solid car, and he had a massive gap in a long line of cars. He could have gone back in, but he wasn't going to do that. So our mirrors touched, and I rang up my insurance firm. I didn't really anything hear anything more about it, but all the legal work is all done by insurance companies because their lawyers want to pay the lowest of payouts, don't they? And then they invented this thing. Well, if you pay another ten or another yeah, twenty, yeah, another thirty quid. I just paid for the legal. Expenses. Well, do you know what I did once? I've got to tell you this very quickly. And this was my mother that told me this. Was that I had a, a literally like a three mile an hour bump once, right? And it was so small. And actually, the guy got out and looked at it. So there's, there's nothing here. And I was like, it's, 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 it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd gone into the, the, the... I'd given him a shunting in the rear, but it was a very, very slow and unsatisfactory one. And to no damage, and he said, that's that. And so I told my mother, and my mother said, oh, you've got to ring and tell your insurers, because if he makes a claim, then you've got to be honest, oh, you've got to tell yes. them. So I rang and told them, I said, there's nothing's happened, he's not made a claim, nothing... And my insurance went up, and I said, I didn't make yes. a claim. And they said, oh, well, no, yes. but you told us. You told us that there yes. might be one. So it went up. So I've got to go, but thank you, Harry, I feel your pain. Just, we're too honest, that's the problem. You get fleeced for it. Coming up in the next hour, we'll talk more about this. Ebbs Akintade will be here, the broadcaster, and we'll talk to him. That's all next here on Talk TV. This is Talk TV. Straight talking, no nonsense, and annoying all the right people. This is Talk TV. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching The Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening. I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. <laughs> me and you conquer time. Who wins? You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about Talk Today? 
We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech writing for this? You see, I'm so rich. <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis Sanz? No, I Sanz. am not. Stop pandying to the nimbies, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Well, it's almost like those highly paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. The first thing they teach you in weather school is. Never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. The one thing Labour would be terrified of if Boris Johnson zoomed back into full focus. Boris Johnson uh, isn't what he was. Most of them seem to have given up. Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, solved. Yeah. Problem solved. He's as up. fit as a butcher's dog. There he's, you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog? Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. <laughs> the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. No, I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know, now you're probably going to boot me off the show after saying <laughs> this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Honestly, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty. Critics, I'd say me included, <laughs> got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, yeah. <laughs> Great first show, you having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. <laughs> I think it's only room for one king, man, you know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, 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 no. no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. It was a fabulous dinner until <laughs> you two uh, mooned us. <laughs> Thank God for Talk TV is not only the home of common sense, it's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on Talk TV and Radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a cow. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on Talk TV. Morning. Christo here on Talk TV. How are you? Thank you for your company. It is three minutes past six. It's a Saturday morning and I am... Thrilled. <laughs> you should be thrilled. To welcome. Give me your name again, Eba Ulu. We don't do that. Why? Ebs. Everyone I knows me as But That was our personal conversation. Can I not say your full name? No, because I don't do I my just... full name. Well, why? Because I'm... I'm just asking. I'm just interested. Because everyone calls me Ebs. Yeah, I know, but is there a reason why? Just because you think it's more complicated to have to sort of spell it out and stuff? Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm Fufas. In my surname, I know. And, you know but see, at least that's phonetic. So you say Fufas, you always think it's oh, spelled F O U F A S. You know, people think it's spelled F O O F A S because Fufas. They always say, oh, Falfas. I say, no, no, Fufas. Uh, F for Foxtrot, O for Oscar, U for Uniform, yeah, and F to, for Foxtrot, yeah, A for yeah. Alpha, yeah. S for Sierra. The number of times I have said that in my life. And still, then, people say Fufaf. Fusas. Uh, in the. Sufaf. <laughs> Susas. I can't do. So all the other thing as well, Chris Stowe. People think my name is Chris and Stowe. And is Stowe? Yes. Right. I get mail sometimes to Chris Stowe. And then he I goes, don't know who Chris Stowe is. Do you just look at the mail and go, in the bin? So I feel your pain about having a, a name that yes, needs to be Yes, but I remember I was out. in the dentist many years ago and someone just said my name, like EBS, how else would you say it? But then someone went, Ebes. I'm going... Why would you say it as Eves? I cannot make this more simple if you tried. Yeah, because then surely that would be double E. You would have thought so. But then Eves. Yeah, Eves. I like Eves. We're not going there. Eves, I can tell. Oh, yes, now you found something to wind me up But then you've kept on. I can tell day. That's quite a difficult name as well. Oh, yeah, well, I never dropped that. And I think people, when they see Akintade, they either say Akintade or they go for it and go Akintade. But why aren't you Ebs Ak? No, because that's just that sounds rubbish. Like J Lo, she can. 
I'm you, not you J-Lo. You could be E-Ak. No. Nah. All right. I'm just trying to help be, here. You could be Sifu. Yeah, I could be. <laughs> <laughs> seafood, sadly. That's what people. That's exactly what they would change it to. Or at school, at school, food face. Instead of food face, food face. Food face? Food face. At school, food face. Or Bisto food face, that was another one. Okay. Christo Bisto gravy face, that was my nickname for ages. Disco was my nickname for a long time, which is fine. I could live with disco. Disco? Why? Disco, disco Christo. Disco Christo? Do you yeah. like discos? I didn't mind. No, just because, you know, I used to like to party and. You know, disco. Okay. Disco Christo. Christmas, I'll get Ebenezer. Oh, uh, of course, yeah, because you're such a misery as well. Compared to you? <laughs> Not miserable, I'm very happy in my mm. life. But, you know, I just, just don't want to just go on for too long, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I love my life, as long as it's just a brief <laughs> interview. Yeah, and then you can move on to something else. <laughs> and then I can just go, okay, okay. be out of here. Fine. I'm very happy other than that. Uh, okay, in Wales... We are living in slow motion driving at 20 miles per hour. Oh, don't get me started. Surely our car insurance should go down. I phoned my insurer to complain about the increase and was told that it was due to inflation and the cost to repair uh, damages with parts that were more expensive. Yeah, but have you made any claims for any parts? No. So what's that got to do with you? I understand putting up the insurance of people that have had accidents that therefore need to have a great deal of parts that are their fault. Great, put theirs up. But not me. You're always ranting about cars in one way, shape or form. But car insurance is the biggest scam going. Yeah, of course, because... Well, because we are kind of uh, vulnerable to what's to what they're telling us. I know you have these um, platforms which we can check our what we're paying for car insurance and, you know, look at other options, but every insurance is really a bit of a scam, isn't it? Um, well, yes, it's a licensed scam to discriminate. Yes. You are licensed to discriminate. Well, well, only obviously for accident prone. No, 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 no. Men pay more for their car insurance than women. Now I know that on paper now they say we don't discriminate against men anymore because of the EU, but that's a load of old rubbish. Men still pay more for their car insurance than women. That is discrimination. Is that because we drive more aggressively, allegedly? But it's nothing to do with that. What why is it? That, why should? Well, yeah, I mean it might be, but why should that have any bearing on car insurance whatsoever? I don't know. But why do men pay more? I didn't know men pay more. Yeah, they than... do. That even though so. Men used to pay more because they were more risk prone. They were more more, more accident prone. It would mm. be there would be more men. But then that was outlawed. But since it's been outlawed, men still pay more. Okay. So that shouldn't be allowed. No, it shouldn't be allowed because it's sexism. And in any other industry, if your your race, your sexual orientation, or your your gender were to come into what you paid, it would be absolutely outrageous. Well, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get offended on your behalf. Do you, you don't drive? I do drive. Well, then you pay more. But don't you care? I, I'm a reasonably safe driver. But it doesn't matter. I'm a re- I've got 20 years of no claims bonus on my car insurance. Went up by 50% this week. Yeah, but you have the option not to stay with the car insurance. You have the option to go to another car. No, another... no this, this was with other car insurers. And then I had to go back and forth. And then eventually I got it back down. But it was such a palaver. Yes, but I think they, but they but they want you to do the work in order to get... Uh... Well, why don't they just give me the good price to start with? I mean, it's still gone up by I mean, about, it's I think, 10%. Like, it's like haggling, basically. That's, yeah, but... that's what we do. We go, well, actually, that car insurance company offered me less. So I'm. Uh, this is the amount that they offer me. Then you go back... And they then say, well, this is what they're offering me, so what can you do to be I had that? to actually take insurance with another company and show them the proof I'd taken the insurance with the other company and paid up front, even though I like to pay monthly, yeah, and then like go it. to my current insurers and say, look, I've paid for this up front. They said, oh, well, we would have given it to you cheaper if you'd wanted. I said, but you didn't say that a minute ago. And they said, oh, well, yeah, you could pay monthly Yeah, with but you know what? Well. It also depends who you speak to. Because different people for the same company say different things. Well, I think Eloise wasn't a person. I was on a chatbot thing, and I think Eloise was a chatbot. No, I don't need to do the whole chatbot things. If I can speak to someone, I'll speak to someone. No, see, I, I was doing it all on the chat. But that's not... Yeah, but if it's not a real person, they're just programmed to, as we all know... But I still to... got it cheaper... But I don't know whether Eloise, whether she was a person... Again, I've, I've assumed Eloise's gender identity. Yes, of course, well. you can't necessarily say she. Do chatbots have gender identities? I, I don't know, but if you presume... No, you can't presume anything. Eloise doesn't mean that she is a she. She could be they but, or them. Uh, so I have to now think of the gender identity of a chatbot? You do, because chatbots have feelings too. Oh, yeah. Just, this is why I just want to get off this earth. I just think sometimes that it would just be easier if I just shuffled away of this mortal coil. This is the second time in ten minutes you've uh, suggested uh, leaving your life early. 
just, I just think, you know, just like enjoy it while you can and then just off. Yep. You know, don't worry, this isn't like a cry for help. I'm not suicidal. I'm just saying that, you where's know. That, where's that crisis helpline? Yeah, I'm just saying, well, I need it more and more. <laughs> Where is that crisis helpline? It's just like life is... It's a lot. I tell At you the what, moment, I'm it's tired. A I'm tired. And I don't mean I'm tired because I've not slept. I mean, I'm tired of all of this. Christmas being cancelled, car insurance going up, Boris Johnson being in our lives, all of this. Just, I'm just tired. That's you, all. Would you like a cup of tea? No. <laughs> yeah, that's the British way of solving everything. Cup yes. Of tea. A nice cup of tea. A nice cup of tea. Yes. I wouldn't get a nice cup of tea in this building. Oh, I don't know. I've got a cappuccino. I'm fine. Did you, did you get that from the machine? Yes. Oh, good luck. It's a very good machine. It's a good machine. It's you don't awful. You don't touch the machine. Yeah, you can't touch it because of COVID. We've got a machine that you have to hover your finger, mm -hmm. like, near yeah. it. You can't actually you can't touch it. Because kind of... I thought it was broken because I was touching yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was doing. And, and it doesn't give you any the, coffee. The, the lovely cleaner said to me, no, 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 stop. It's touch-free. Touch-free. It's ridiculous. To the machine, not to her. Yeah. Clear. The cleaner is touch-free. I hope that you've respected that, <laughs> at least. Uh, OK, what else have we got here? Um, uh, OK, hi, Christo. Where's your poppy? Uh, Someone has asked already, Andrew. Where's my poppy? And mm. I just said, I just said, should I, should I have worn a poppy? I haven't actually seen them. In my defence, I haven't actually seen any poppies anywhere. You're the first person I've seen. But as there magic you know. could happen, what's this? It's a poppy. What's Where's this? Your, have you got a pin? Thank you. A lovely person has just passed me this poppy. Uh, is there a pin? So, since when did poppies become so... Uh, what's that? What is that? Has it got a sticky thing on it? or is it's, it a, actually... it's not like the one with, oh. with the green thing. This is... Oh, I've got a paper this. one. Oh, look at this. Okay, hold on. I got more plugged have... in that I might... I'm the... Oh, yeah. It's all flat. It's like a it's flat, flat paper one. Look yes, it. it's completely recyclable. That is. So how are you going to get that on? I don't even know how you put it on because it hasn't got a pin. See what you've done now? You've like you've actually. Oh no, I've gone the wrong way as well. I'm, I'm, so it's actually supposed to be that way. Oh, hang on. So I've, I've now realised I've got my poppy on wrong. Okay, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised someone didn't comment on the fact that your poppy leaf was the wrong direction. Yeah, it's got to who go. That, it, who, I thought it was that way, and it's that way. Who was it? Who said that I uh, wasn't wearing a poppy? Uh, Andrew said, "Hi, Christo. It's great to see Ebbs back this week. Did he forget to put on his poppy?" Okay, uh, Andrew. Thank you very much. I've got. So my, he was paying you a compliment. I've got my poppy back. Thank you. you. Can you? And I, and I will. Please? Got a little bit of. Have we got something sticky for Ebbs? <laughs> <laughs> there is no way of putting this on. How do I put that on? Stick it to my head? Well, no, that would be a mark of respect. Yes. Yeah. Would it? Put it over your mouth. It, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, some respect from you. Um, oh, I've got a pin. Yeah, you've got to try and get the pin. Put it through your skin. That makes it stay easier. <laughs> OK, we'll figure this out in the break. I don't even know how you put... Has yeah. it, this is a new style poppy, in case you didn't know. This is, this is the first time I'm seeing it. Well, perhaps you'd, if, you'd, if you'd had more respect for oh, the people, the sure. fallen soldiers, and done this before we came on air, <laughs> rather than doing it like this, which just goes to show what? your lack of respect. OK. I um, consider you. myself told off. Um, OK. <laughs> if one wears the paper poppy in the rain, will it disintegrate? Well, do you know what? I saw them. I, I really want to get one of these, the ones that you have on the front of your car. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, like the red noses really, that you yes, used yes, to get. Yes, I quite yes. like the thought of that. Like but then, the, then other people argue that's disrespectful because you shouldn't be using your car to promote a poppy. It should be on your person. Who on, on the earth would say that? If the, anyone were to say to me that you shouldn't use your car to promote a poppy, I would say that they were talking nonsense. OK, uh, what was the name of the person who said I didn't have a poppy again? Andrew? Yes. Andrew, yeah. He might suggest the same. He wouldn't okay, say that that be... was disrespectful. OK, fine. Um... Matthew says, I would try chatting up a chatbot on Very and it wouldn't understand me. Um, either one of us was non-binary, but it could have been both. <laughs> a non-binary chatbot? Could be. This is where we've come to. It's true, though. Right. I, like, AI is going to advance so much soon that you're going to have to... You're going to have to have chatbots that are... that have gender identities. OK. You're going to, also going to have chatbots who are going to take offence and threaten to hang up on you if you continue in a certain tone. Yeah, you can't... Uh, well, have you ever sworn at Siri? No. Oh, I have. Or Alexa. Yeah, well, I don't... I, I, the only one I have is Siri. In fact, I don't okay. have any of them. What happens if you swear at Siri? Um, it, 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 it tells you off. Well, it says it's not very nice. 
OK. How often do you swear at Siri? Well, sometimes it's useless, and I find myself swearing at it, because it's so useless. It's so useless. Like, yeah, OK, this is how it's ridiculous uh, a Siri is. I was in the car the other day, and you know now you can't touch your phone in the car or do anything, so I no, wanted to put on. I said, I put on. I said, could you put on Madonna's bedtime stories, Siri? Right? Now, what do you think I wanted played when I said, could you put on Madonna's bedtime stories, please, Siri? You wanted the album Bedtime Stories played? Yes. I didn't want the wheels on the bus for children that you listen oh. to when you go to bed. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> that, no, bed Bedtime stories. Yeah, but, but bedtime stories by Madonna. I did Madonna. say that, by Madonna, yes. Okay. But then, so then you have to say, may I have the Madonna album, Bedtime Stories, May Theory? Right, so you had to say a few more words. Oh, my God, first world problems. Well, it's just, no, but I did say Madonna's Bedtime Stories, and I ended up with, you know, uh, like you, the owl and the pussycat and twinkle, twinkle, and all of that rubbish. Blaring out the car stereo, going through Streatham. Thank you. I mean, that would that would have got heads turning. Um... Poppies, you're both morons. Christo, you have an old-school plastic pin. The other guy, it's a new non-plastic one. Ah, all right. OK, but uh, as you know, all things poppies, whoever that is, as the other guy, um, can you tell me how to pin that on? Um, I hope your presenters aren't just given poppies and they donate something when they are given a puppy. Poppy. I think you said puppy there, but I think you mean poppy because I don't think we wear puppies. No. And that would be disrespectful. And we're not giving puppies. Um, it's not just wearing a puppy. Poppy, John from Angus, it's donating to the British Legion. Well, actually, John, um, there is a, uh, a a box of poppies outside, but it's the British Legion box, so there is a, uh, a donation box as well. And so when we take one, we are told to donate. So we don't just have a box of poppies like this, they're, like they're lying around. And also then it's not replenished, it's replenished by the British Legion and they come and collect the money. So absolutely, um, I actually agree with you on that. And any media organisation I work for, because they have one at Channel 5 as well, again, it's it's a proper British Legion box and it, and it's frowned upon. Um, what, to take a poppy and not put money yeah. in? Yeah. But if someone, what, if someone stood there watching you take a poppy out and not put money in or put money in? I, I, mean, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know, I just would put money in. I did. Yes. I, I, got, I got this from um, ITN okay. and I put money in it Okay. when I got it. because. But, you know, some could argue, oh, well, you might not have change on you. Maybe it needs a little chip and pin thing. So you well, then just... you know that you need to do it next time. Exactly. Or bring in a fiver and that covers all your poppies I just you hope, need to go somewhere. I just hope now we don't live in an age where people are going to get offended. If you take a poppy you don't put, and you and haven't been seen to actively put money in, and then you're going to be judged for that, or someone's going to take offence. What I, do you know, what I prefer is the pin as well. I like the pin that you can take because it's easier to move it, and I think it also looks really nice. I'm, I'm going to buy a pin this year because they're a bit more expensive. Well, so you feel like oh, you mean the actual yes, yes the uh, poppy pin. And do you know yes. what, I, 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 I think I did the right thing, in as much as um, I found my one from last year. Mm. It was in. It was in. Yes, like, I've got in, the actual poppy pin that says yeah. 2022, but it's got 2022 on it, yes. and I threw it away. Because I was like, well, I, I'll have to buy again. a new one because yes. I, I of next year. But no one would have seen that I was wearing this. But I'd have known that I was wearing the. But I hope we don't one. now start to live in an age where I think things are moving forward, where people are going to start judging how you wear your poppy. You're not wearing it right. Maybe no, you should donate if you take a poppy. Absolutely. I, I, I hope you'll donate. Now. Absolutely, I will. When I have changed, so when I'm next in, I will put some money in. Well, that might not be. You might not get booked by the end of remembrance. Well, I'm making sure that I do. Well, I'm, I'm deliberately not now, so you're going to have to somehow donate to the British Legion in a different way. Well, I shall stand outside and stand with a couple of pounds and make sure it goes well, in Well, the... next time you see a British Legion box, put something more in I it. I will. Thank you. I might give them a fiver. Um, OK, uh, another one. If one... Oh, yeah, you've already done that one about the poppy in the rain. Thank you. Um, no, that was a very fair point, though, about presenters just being given poppies. Because we, sh you should donate if you have a poppy. Yes, thank you. And, oh I, God. and also, at what point, what date is the point at which you need to wear a poppy? Uh, a month before. I think it's the twenty sixth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, something like that, that you start wearing them. Not not a, not a month before. You mean two weeks before? Two weeks before. Yes. Sorry, yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry, I meant two weeks. I don't know why I said a month. Well, yeah, two weeks before. But two weeks before. Yeah, okay. it's about the twenty. Yeah, because it's it's the eleventh. It's isn't the eleventh yeah. day. So it's it's. Uh, Around about 27th or 28th of October. Yeah, about... The, uh, no, the 26th is exactly two weeks before. OK. So that's when you take it. Well, now we know. Yeah, I stand corrected. Thank you. Um, 
OK, when we come back, I'm so late for the break because we've been talking about poppies. We will talk more about car insurance. We will talk more about Farage being debanked. And uh, also the other story as well. Oh, Christmas being cancelled as well. And uh, how awful that is. I know you're angry about that. Thank you. Here on Talk TV. Morning, and uh, <laughs> I love this. I don't know who sent this thing. When you get divorced, Barbie, I was talking about what I was going to buy my niece for Christmas. I had the same issue last year because it's all about Barbie. And uh, when you get divorced, Barbie, do you get Ken's house in his car as well? I don't think <laughs> Ken has a house in the car. I think the, the house of the car belonged to Barbie already. Ken, uh, Barbie's an independent woman. She is. Um, we've been talking about the Christmas market, which is going to now be called the uh, Winter Market at a museum in Durham because um, they've changed the name. Christmas has been cancelled. Ebbs Akintade, Christmas has been cancelled. Well, no, Christmas hasn't been cancelled. The only time Christmas was, was cancelled when we had that, uh, was it 2021, when we had that whole pandemic thing? Well, Christmas has been cancelled at this museum. We can't use the word Christmas for the market. It's a festive market now. Winter Market. So this is the erosion of our rights and traditions. Great. Well, I'm going to... I think we should just do what we feel. I'm still going to call it a Christmas market because in our heart of hearts, that's what it's known as. Well, not there. Well, I won't go to Durham. Well, there's many good reasons aside from that not to go to Durham. Uh, <laughs> Oliver... In... You just <laughs> lost all the people who are watching who are in Durham. Got it right. That no, Christo I like, in the bin. I like the North, especially that it's that it's there and not here. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. I lived in the north for ages. I know you did. And that's how you kind of justify I, I it. To, no, do you know what? I've always found hilarious. We'll talk to Oliver in a second, but Susie Blake, who is a brilliant actress, um, and she's done Corrie, she's done loads of things, but she used to play the continuity announcer on uh, Victoria Wood, as seen on TV, uh, which is one of the greatest sketch shows ever, sketch series going. And she, they used to cut to her, and she'd introduce acorn antiques mm. and things like that. And she, she, the one that she did. And we'd like to apologise to our viewers in the north. It must be terrible for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. So funny. OK, Oliver in Middlesex. Hello, Oliver. Good morning, Christo. Now, what do you think about this? Or, or is, it, is it Cristiano? Or... Cristiano, might be Cristiano, or Chris. Uh, Chris, if you yeah. want to upset me... Call me Chris. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll stick with Christo. I like Christo. Oh, thank you. Thank you, all. Um, so, um, apparently, this yeah. Bose Museum has rebranded its annual Christmas market to a winter market. And apparently, according to the Mail Online, it's been met with disbelief. What do you think about this? They say it's going to get, get more visitors. What do you think? I, I, I don't think it will make any difference to a lot of the visitors these days because uh, it's so commercialised. Um, I mean, the different religions have have, have different um, names for their festivals, and if we were to rebrand one of those, there'd be absolute outcry in this country. Well, the the director of the museum said they, they've not cancelled Christmas, um, no. but they celebrate the festive season, and that's why they're calling it the festive uh, market, or the winter market, rather than but the Christmas market. With that, I get the feeling they're trying to take the word Christ out of it, which um, is sort of eroding the Christian element, and therefore the religious element. And commercialising it more. But what about people who aren't um, religious? Isn't this going to be good for them that they can say, "Well, I don't want to have uh, a religious." I, I, I wouldn't say it'd be good, good, good for them or bad for them. I think everyone should celebrate their beliefs in the way they wish to, and they shouldn't be judged on it. So, do you think that Christmas is an offensive word for some people? I. I wouldn't consider it offensive, no, but... Uh, but do you think some people do? I, I can't see why they would. Not not unless they're extremists or fanatics or mentally ill. Um, <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> um, obviously, no disrespect to people with mental illness, but... but um, no, I, I I can't see why people would have a have have a, um, that view of it. All right, listen, good to talk to you. That's Oliver Can I? in middle. Oh, Oliver, what do what do you want to say? Something else, Oliver. Something really important. What? Um, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you need to treasure. Stop fiddling every with your little... poppy. Sorry. Stop fiddling with your oh, poppy. Look, it fell. Noise. It fell off. Sorry about that, Oliver. Go on. Uh, on, on poppies, you can actually buy uh, a dedicated poppy to a fallen soldier that is made, and it, I've got them on myself, and it's made from part of a landing craft, a Spitfire, and an F-10 from World War Two. Wow. And how much are they? I think I paid around £60 for it. But it's, it's beautiful. It's a presentation box. Oh, nice. Um, and one of the fallen soldiers uh, from World War II has his name on the card that because comes with it. You, you were out in Middlesex, so you wouldn't have been too far when that big display was on at, at the Tower of London. Did you ever see it with all of those poppies? With all the poppies, it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. I, I, it was. I didn't see it. I wasn't there personally, but I, I saw, saw, it, saw it on TV. Um, really nice. Listen, Oliver, nice to talk to you. Um, Thank you. That's sorry. Oliver in Middlesex. Um, you, oh, you make so much noise when you're fiddling with your poppy over Look, there. you get told off for not wearing a poppy, then you do put a poppy on, and then you'll find 
this will be breaking news. You'll find that with these poppies, it's really difficult to put the pin back in the other side. So that's so it's just going to continually fall off. But it's fine because at least it's environmentally friendly and it will biodegrade. Great. I mean, we're talking about people who went to war and you're talking about the difficulty of getting a poppy on. I mean, I think perspective, Ebs, you've been very disrespectful there. OK. Um, Chris, this is making me angry. No other religious gets festival gets changed. Imagine changing Ramadan to a more inclusive name. Just stop it, says Claire. Well, I think that is actually the point, Claire, that is irritating to some people. I don't think that if everything was changed, because some people might not be attracted to an event, um, then I don't think anyone would have a problem. But I think it's only things like Christmas that are ever changed. I mean, I don't know. Do you? No, think and Christmas. Is... I know, let's just get a measure on this. It's not like Christmas is changed. No, we haven't actively cancelled the word Christmas. I think there's this one-off thing that's happening in Durham. It's captured a bit of media attention because, they think, as you said, oh, it's raiding our civil rights or what we've already done. It's not. It's just a one-off little thing. The Christmas market will be returned in 2024 in Durham. But for everywhere else, I walked through Covent Garden earlier this week. Christmas is definitely alive, active and on the way in about seven weeks. I, no less than that. No, but I think that, that people get frustrated that we live in a society now where we worry about offending a few people who might not like the word Christmas as opposed to the majority who do. I think that's why people get angry. It's, I, I think it's, it's about the mentality behind it. Well, I'm just going to call you O because you've got Christ in your name. So I'm going to call you O because I don't like the word Christ. Well, yes, I'm going to do I that mean, My name does derive from Christ. Christmas is actually my name day. Your name? What do you mean? Well, in Greece, you have a name day. It's oh, do you? bigger than your birthday, yeah. So, so you're, it, it, it's the saint you're named after. Okay. So, um, because the, 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 the birth of Christ is Christmas Day, my name day is Christmas it's Day. It's 25th of December? Yeah. Okay. So people say to me, Quran uh, Yapola, uh, which, is, which is, you know, a, a, a good year. Um, and that's how they celebrate the fact that it's my name day. Okay. But um, they're probably more focused on Christmas. They are more focused on Christmas. But I, when I was younger, I used to demand a present for both, obviously. Um, of course but, you uh, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, but my name, but, but you're right, maybe my name should be cancelled. Maybe I should be called Winto instead of Christo because at Christmas it might offend people. Oh dear, we're not going But then that. that would mean that we would have to go down the route and say, well, I'm, not, I'm never going to call anyone Mohammed. Yes, and then what do we call people? Well, we just wouldn't cut. I mean, a lot of names are derived from religion, right? I mean, my name, we were talking about names earlier. You, you said my full name. My full name, actually, is God's gift. That's what it means. <laughs> it's, yes. Oh, God, if that's not a reason to cancel religion, I don't know what is. 0344 499 1000. One can put the pin on the clothing and then slot the potty, poppy stem through. Look, I've already stabbed my thumbs twice. I'm not doing this again. Well, that's the sacrifice that you make. Thank you for the fallen. Um, now, what about bonfire night? Because aren't you going to a, yeah, a woke bonfire night? I'm, I'm hosting a uh, bonfire and, well, it's a fireworks night. How, it's a Guy Fawkes night. Mean you're hosting it. I'm hosting it. So, thousands of people turn up yes. uh, to a park in South London. There's a 25-minute uh, firework uh, uh, arrangement done to music. And in previous years, not last year, but in previous... You didn't... Not last so year. How, how, but how does one host such things? You welcome people on the microphone. Yeah, yeah. And you have the MC. And yes, the MC. You get, and get all the music going, get people warmed up. The kids all shake their lights and they've got the cafe. And, and then you've got a nice... You'll have a big bonfire going and everything and everyone will be around it with, like, you know, all of their uh, uh, well, up sparklers until, and stuff. Up until 2020, that yeah. was the case. And then right. 2021 and 2022, we didn't because of the pandemic. Right, uh, and now you're going to get... But, but when, and you can put a big guy on the bonfire and everything and burn the guy? N no. Why? Right, so there's now, because of the environment, I'm it sorry. gives... Because of the environment, as in the Earth's environment, right. having bonfires sends out too many emissions. So the bonfire's been cancelled. It was cancelled last year, and then we're only going to have these... Instead of the bonfire, the alternative now is these drone lights... I'm that sorry? are done in arrangements of kind of fireworks and fire and stuff. Uh, uh, it's a bonfire night celebration. Well, it's a Guy Fawkes night celebration. But with fireworks. Without the bonfire. Without the so bonfire. So it's just a night. 
It's, it's a night with fire night. It's just a night. It's a fireworks night. Well, soon they'll cancel those because of the emissions. Well, I was thinking that. And then what do you do? You just then all you have and then it's just are drone, these drone night. lights. <laughs> I mean, thinking of a big old drone. That's <laughs> that's maybe why they've chosen you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm thinking. Um, that's ridiculous. No bonfire. Or no, bonfire no, night. no bonfire. You know, I think I'm going to find now that a lot of the big uh, fireworks nights, Guy Fawkes nights that we have on this, either November the fourth or fifth are going to be bonfireless because they send out too many emissions. That's just... I mean, there is just no fun left. Well, I mean... Do you this... know what? I'm going to go home and burn something. A match? Yeah, or... or Well, I live in a... I think I live in a... I'm allowed a, a bonfire in my house, aren't I? Not a bonfire, obviously, but... No, you know, that would a, be weird. A, 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 an open fire, aren't I? I think if I use smokeless coal, I'm allowed it. Oh, OK. They, they you... discourage it. But because of the environment. But, yes. But so we're having to be we're having to like, cancel bonfires, and I think one by one, if you're looking forward to a Guy Fawkes night in your area, which you're going to go to, don't necessarily expect there to be a bonfire. So don't expect a bonfire. No, a bonfire, a bonfire no, no. I actually admit I used to. Well, we had one of the biggest bonfires in South London, uh, but now no more. Um, it's, it's just how it is now. There's it's a the huge. Same. I'm looking at the Ali Pali one. Oh, yes. there is a bomb. I think there is a bonfire one in Ali Pali. Mm, I think there's also one in Battersea Park, you know, down here in London. But uh, yes, uh, don't expect a bonfire necessarily. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But we're trying to be environmentally friendly. No, I just think it's making everything just a fun sponge. Honestly. I mean, do you, do you think oh, it's a bonfire night every night in China with their coal stations? Do you think that they're, they're looking at us laughing? They are laughing at us. They're sticking coal on their power stations, the ones that they build within about 30 seconds that yeah. they get built. Yeah. They're absolutely lovely and warm and toasty in their homes while we're sitting here with a little bit of tidal energy and no bonfire and just misery everywhere. And we've probably paid the u to get there. Probably. And the car parking. What a load of old nonsense. So, yeah, so that's the update with bonfire nights. Don't necessarily expect a bonfire, is what I'll say. Um, OK, a few uh, here. Um, with all due respect, you're talking rubbish. Your name shouldn't be cancelled. That's disrespectful towards your parents, your culture. And I'm up listening to you um, and not the weasels who suggest such a thing. Thank you. You can't cancel my name, Ebs. What a horrible suggestion. Thank you. Um, uh, Christopher says, Winter market, Christmas is Christmas. We are a secular country born out of Christian background. It's another erosion of our character and heritage. It's shameful. The museum director needs to resign or be fired. Well, do you know where the museum is? And I didn't realise. Where is it? Barnard Castle. Oh, Durham. Barnard Castle. Now, where have I heard that name before where Dominic Cummings <laughs> was that where remind me that's where he drove to test his eyes wasn't it it was that might during the pandemic my favorite excuses I've ever heard in the history of political excuses it definitely put Barnard Castle on the map it did and the fact that he would he, he was complete <laughs> so good he was complaining about his eyesight being damaged potentially by, by having covid so therefore he chose to strap his toddler on the back seat of his car and drive 30 miles to test that he could see right i think i might do that i don't, I I don't, I don't even wear glasses absolutely brilliant i'm not sure that i've got full vision to land a 747 so i, I just think we should give it a go on our castle. let's just give it a go okay you know, just see what happens. And if, if I if I crash it, well, we'll know okay. that I can't see properly. Well, I might just do a round trip to Glasgow from yeah, London. Blindfolded. Because you may as well see if you can do it. Yes. Just see. OK. You know, and if and, and if you crash and kill loads of people, you'll know you can't. And that's that that's that mystery solved. There was a reason for going. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, another one here as well. A few others. Um, uh, wearing poppy is a choice, not a rule. People don't have to buy one or wear one. Asking someone to wear their poppy is like asking them where their RSPCA badges. Both are charities you don't have to support. Well, actually, you are right. And I, I, I was conflicted on this. You know, there was the idea... I think there was a story a few years ago about people um, burning poppies. Um, burning poppies? Yeah, people who were angry about the Iraq War oh, and burning okay. them. 
Right. And I remember being outraged at the time, but actually a lot of you're far smarter people than I, when I did a phone in on it, actually said, yeah, we all hate it, but they, the very people you're commemorating with the poppy mm. fought for your right, if you want to, to rip up and burn a poppy. No, I wouldn't, but you actually have that right because that's the country that we live in and that's the country that they, they handed to us with their sacrifice. Um, I mean, just because you're not wearing... freedom to do that. Exactly. And, and also, just because you're not wearing a poppy doesn't mean that you're not remembering. You know, people are going to be hung to dry because they're, like, now on a screen and they're not wearing a poppy. Is that what's going to happen now? Yeah, yeah, because you're right, because then there is the danger of it becoming a, a virtue signal. Yes. I'm only wearing one because I'll get in trouble if I don't. Yes, exactly. As opposed to because, because you... it means something. Yes. But see, I but I want to wear it. I mm. I really want to. And I, I and I always I wear one every year. I buy one. It does sometimes fall off and I lose it. Sometimes before Remembrance Sunday. But I know I've done my bit. Yeah, when I buy loads, I end up with like ten of them, and I find them in pockets for the next like the next, twelve months. Yes, squashed, like, squashed flat. up and flattened in pieces. But I always do. But that's because I really really want to. But you, but there, that's a very fair point. In as much as you should be able to say, I don't want to wear one. Mm. And I wouldn't agree with you, and I would probably say that you, that you are wrong to have that opinion. No, it's freedom of choice. But it's freedom of choice, and Absolutely. we should respect it, because yep. if we don't, then it's the very authoritarian society that was fought against by the people who we're remembering. There we go. So there we go. Um, Michael in Yorkshire is angry about the bonfire, and we'll tell you why in a moment. And... Uh, we're also going to talk here on uh, Talk TV uh, a little bit more about um, Nigel Farage. Maybe we'll do that as well when we come back to the must. saga that continues. And uh, we'll also hear uh, from David Bull. And uh, Dr Rene is back as well. Uh, we're thrilled about that. And that's all coming up here on Talk TV. <laughs> Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored in New York City. Very impressive, well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. <laughs> me and you, conquer time. Who Happy wins? Friends. You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? I'm so rich. <laughs> but, uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis Sanz? No, I am Sanz. not. Stop pandering to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Yeah. It's, it's almost like those highly done. paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> there's a threat that you'd be worried about. So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. and We're just asking patients to be patient with us. The one thing Labour would be terrified of if Boris Johnson zoomed back into full focus. Boris Johnson uh, isn't what he was. Most of them seem to have given up. Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, yes, solved. Please. Yeah. Problem solved. He's as fit as a butcher's dog. There he's, you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog? Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. <laughs> the knock-on effect is far larger than just CO2. I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know, no, you're probably going to boot me off the show after saying <laughs> this girl. <laughs> 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 man... I can't say, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty. Critics, I'd say me included, <laughs> got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, <laughs> yeah. Great first show. You having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. I think it's only room for one king, man. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. I'd rather do it on camera. No, 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 no. no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. 
How do you feel about that influence that you had? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. It was a fabulous dinner <laughs> until you two uh, mooned us. <laughs> Thank God for Talk TV is not only the home of common sense, it's the only place where you get the truth. Morning, it's Christo here on uh, Talk TV. And um, Pat has made a very good point, called to make this point, and I'm, I'm going to, to, to uh, uh, convey this point. Um... Ebbs Akintade joins me, and he was the one that gave us the breaking news that Carl Sholton's bonfire night, well, it's just a night. No, Guy Fawkes night. Guy Fawkes night. Yes. We can't slag it off, because are you getting paid for the gig? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> just, oh, I don't want you to lose the gig, because we're slagging it off. I'm not slagging it off. No. I'm not. You might be. I'm not. Well, I just think it's a shame. I think it's a shame that that's another tradition. You know, it's a terrorist atrocity that was failed that we like to celebrate every year because it wasn't the blowing up of the Houses of Parliament. It's very weird, that. What, that we celebrate Guy yeah. Fawkes Night the way we do? Yeah. It is odd. It is a bit weird because it was like it was an attempted terror attack. But I just think it gives us another it. reason to try and uh, enjoy something, to have something to look forward to in November. So I hate this time of year. Actually, what just the autumn? Well, no, not no, because um, I've got dogs and it's 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 all oh, yes. I think I'm you sure should, they have to, I think you know, bonfire night, maybe even like that weekend or the night before or something. Great, absolutely fine. But if it were down to me, I would actually, I think it's ridiculous you can buy fireworks, you should they should just be displays and then you can know what time they're happening and where they're happening. The fact you can go to a stop a shop and buy fireworks to me is absolutely barking mad. Why? Because they're small explosives that make loads of noise. They're incredibly dangerous, and we let people buy them so that youth can hurl them. Can, any, can anyone buy fireworks? Yeah, am yeah, I being, you, I am I being fixed? 16. OK, OK. It might be 18 now. but yeah, I've, I've never bought fireworks in A my lot life. of places don't sell them as much as they used to. Uh, I think supermarkets you used to be able to buy them much more easily. I think a lot of places you can't buy them as easily. But, yeah, you can buy them. You, go, you buy them over the counter okay. in, 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 in shops. And See, I personally wouldn't. Yeah, but a lot of people do. Mm. I think you've got to be 18 now to buy fireworks. OK. You used to be 16. Yes. But it means you can just... You see, just people can go in and throw them at cars and stuff like that. And also, it's just that for the fortnight running up to bonfire night... Is or, when you, or, hear, you or, hear them or, all the time. Or, as I would call it in your case, non-fire night. Um, they... Uh, <laughs> <that's fun. laughs> You're proud of that one. <laughs> non-fire night, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 it's awful for my doggies. Yeah. Awful! It's suddenly banging and explosives out of absolutely nowhere. It's absolutely dreadful. Um, so there, Cooperman says, "I'm cutting down a massive privet in our garden. I'm chopping and drying the thickest wood to burn all next summer in a fire pit and a barbecue. All in favour, all in honour of Saint Greta. Thank you for that." Um, Pat in London called to say, uh, "Why don't they cancel wars instead? Because they give off emissions." I mean, it's a good point. Well, the, uh, the Greta this week was talking about... Um, well, actually, I think that, that might have been a fake clip that, that took me in a little bit. I'm what pretty was you, sure. What was she talking about? Um, there was a clip circling around, and I think it might have been fake, like a fake AI clip, because she was talking about people need to use vegan grenades. That was fake, Don't right? get sucked in. That was fake. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, another one here... Uh, it was, that was fake, wasn't it? Uh, Steve says, now I've heard it all, a bonfire night with no bonfire because of the environment. Well, it's it's a Guy Fawkes night instead of a bonfire night, in fairness. They never actually advertised that there would be no, a bonfire. No, it's either they advertise it as fireworks or Guy Fawkes night. Um, another one here as well. So, Michael in Yorkshire says, let me get this right, we're banning bonfires whilst China are opening two coal stations a week. It's ridiculous. Yeah, we are, Michael, we are. Um, another one here as well. Um, I wonder how many emissions are made to create and power the fun sponge drones and how many nine-year-old Congolese children were employed to hand mine the lithium. But it's quite complicated. That's why the smaller hands helps, because it's quite complicated no, to get that out. No, no, Christo, no. You see, that's why it's better with the smaller fingers. Congolese is quite specific. Uh, what a time to be alive, says Bill in Fleet. Well, I think that that's where there were a lot of... of I mean, it's terrible. I mean, I jest, because it's so awful. What else can you do? But it's awful. 
that children are mining the lithium for all of these batteries that make us all environmentally friendly. Ridiculous. So, but I mean, if you take then if you take away the drone lights, then all you've got are fireworks. Yeah, and they'll be gone soon because the emissions for those. And actually, I, 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 I would rather they be banned because they're really dangerous. But actually, that's what I should go for. What? I should campaign for them to be banned because they're unenvironmentally friendly. That would definitely get them. I should write to Sadiq Khan. He'll ban them in a second. And then all we'll be left with are drone lights. Or possibly not. Because no, of the because companies. of the lithium. There'll be nothing. We'll just have blackness on bonfire right. night. Just right. nothing. And what, or what night should we call that? Just call it night. OK. Just at night. Just night. Yeah. We all get to go out. We're just in the all night. Get to go out. No, Drizzly, that's, that's it. early November. When is someone? I bet you the next thing as well. And 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 that I don't think they've strayed into it yet, but they will. Just stop oil, extinction rebellion. They're going to start talking about the emissions cost of Christmas soon. I'll, I'll be a bit, actually. Do you know what? I'm you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna do I'm that. I'm going to look it up now. I bet you someone has. Oh, yeah, but someone has probably complained about everything. Everything that's oh, there we go. Marginally the stock, fun. The stock. Home uh, Environment Institute, the carbon cost of Christmas. Right. Um, uh, Christmas festivities could result in as much as 650 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. Another one here. The 12 carbons of Christmas. Um, <laughs> oh, God, you're going to have killjoys everywhere. Are you were a part of this, Ebbs. How am I part of it? Um, how to make a low-carbon Christmas dinner. The BBC did this last year. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this. Um, I think I'm here Christmas morning doing Christo's Christmas Cracker Are for you? you again. Yes. I love doing Christmas morning on the radio or the TV. I really do. I, it's such a joyous show. People, I like hearing from people who are on their own. I like oh, hearing yeah, from course. people who are uh, just to tell me what their Christmas plans are. We talk about Christmas dinner. We do some champagne taste testing. So we're trying to work out the timings. So I've put it to the management that we'll either do 7 till 10 or I'm actually up for maybe doing sort of 8 till 11 because I remember last year when I did it, um, the first hour was obviously a bit quiet because obviously people don't want to get up too early on Christmas Day. But the final hour between 9 and 10, the phone lines were off the hook and then we sort of ended at 10 o'clock. So I've said to them there's a good argument for us to... Extend it. Extend it, or do four hours. But it's also a good argument for you to not be with hubby and family in Christmas morning. Well, no, that's fine, because I'll be going there by, like, 11. OK. And he'll sleep in on Christmas morning anyway, and we're going on to my parents' house anyway, so okay. we're not doing Christmas. Well, what are we going to call the show? We're going to call it O's Xmas Show. No. Because we can't say Christ. Oh, Yeah. Just O's, O's Xmas Cracker. So Christo's Christmas Cracker is firmly what it's going to be called. And so I'll let you know the timings when we know, but I will be here on Christmas morning, one of my favourite things to do. Um, Apart from open presents, drink champagne. Well, we'll, we'll do champagne on the show. OK, be drunk. And then I'll have to go straight up to my parents' house, which is why I'll need a couple of drinks before I deal with my mother on Christmas morning. OK. But you're not driving, obviously. I'm not driving, no. <laughs> Uh, of course, <laughs> to not. be clear, I'm, I'm the designated drinker. <laughs> um, so, uh, the, a report was done on the BBC last year, Appetite for Change, oh, and uh, there's an unspoken rule that you don't discuss the calorie content of Christmas dinner, um, but they do go on to tell you that it's 5,200 calories, so thanks, BBC, for that. But now they're saying that because of the climate emergency and the global collapse of biodiversity, we can't ignore those things, so therefore we need to talk about the metric CO2 equivalent used to quantify the emissions from various greenhouse gases of your turkey. Oh, my God, this is so many words that are just making <laughs> Christmas miserable. We need things to look forward to. November, we've got Guy Fawkes Night. So don't, don't, don't roast your turkey. What do you do with the turkey? Because it's the least sustainable way of cooking it. So, so how do you, well, how are you supposed to cook the turkey? So it, it it's if a, you have turkey, it's an other... inefficient way. So it's better to cook it over a slow cooker over a longer amount of time with lower energy use. Oh God! So Please. that's the way. Because they're greenhouse gas efficient. Um, then remove the turkey. I place it in a pan on the hob and fry it for five minutes over a high heat so therefore it gets a bit warm before you do it. You could use an air fryer for your turkey as well. 
And um, but how big would the air fryer have to be? <laughs> yeah, with, they um, occupy so much room as it is. Very big. And uh, uh, there we go. And there is some single-use plastic involved, though, after you've thrown away that from the turkey, which might make you feel bad as it's well. It's impossible not to. So there we go. Now. Talking about a stuffed, a stuffed <laughs> bird. I thought you were going to say talking about turkeys. No. Oh. It's called you a stuffed bird. Yeah, well, that's which fine. Is nice as well. Is uh, it? Yeah, bronzed. Do I? Yeah. It's you, lovely makeup. Yeah, you are quite bronzed <laughs> yes, today. Uh, well, you know, I had to make up for actually feeling uh, not brilliant. Still. You went to bed about four o'clock yesterday. I afternoon. was very tired. Oh. It was, how do you know when I was in bed? Because you announce it. You announce every single move on, that you do on Twitter. <laughs> I, I, I was slightly disconcerted by he was right. Know. Yeah, he was right. I went to bed about six o'clock. I just it's it'd be a long day. And also doing talk today on a Friday, I start very early at oh, two. So, so busy. Um, um, yes, I am busy. And, hello, Evs. Nice to see you. Lovely to see you. Yeah, <laughs> cooking a low carbon and Christmas dinner. No, of course not. What? No, 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 we're just talking about. No, no. I, I walked, wondered wh whether I'd walked into a cookery program actually <laughs> when I arrived. Uh, no, I'm actually going to take my mum out on oh, Christmas you? Day. Yes, oh, well, yes. I like doing a Christmas like that. Where are you going? We're actually going to a hotel to have a proper, proper sort of English. Christmas just you lunch. and her, or just me and my family? Oh, just me and my lovely. Mom. Which will be really nice. We're, so she's coming to London, uh, and she loves London anyway. Are so. you allowed to say which hotel, or are you worried that stalkers might turn up? No, I, I can, but <laughs> uh, the Savoy. Oh, lovely. Yes. Oh, you're going, you're yeah. going there. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, Top end. Yeah, of course, yeah. well, you know, it's I've only got one month. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. yes, yes, yes. And also, for two of you, I think well, that's a, a nice thing to because it will probably be about three-ish ahead. Well, th well, it's not cheap, let me, let me say. Yeah, yeah but I think actually it's... But I think, I think if you're going to do it, what you want to do is to do it in, in festive spirit, don't you? And, of course, they will dress the hotel beautifully. Yes. Yeah, it will be quintessentially oh, English. If there's only a couple of you, I think that's a... I think if it's a big table, it's, it becomes astronomical. Well, of course, of, you, of course. And, and also, then, it's the opportunity to wander through London looking at the Christmas lights yeah, stuff lovely. that actually I never do you could listen yes. to even though I live in, in London listen to you in the morning yes <laughs> yeah. yes can't wait maybe for that maybe you could come on and do a little hello I, I, maybe I could yes what day is Christmas Day it's, uh, it's a Monday the, 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 the Saturday it is Saturday. It is Saturday. Is so it? I, no, no, it's not. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. It's a Monday because yeah. I'm doing this show obviously the day before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, you could come on and say well, hello. That's very want. kind. Book you. No, because I've got to go and pick mum up. Oh, where from? From. <laughs> what is this stalking <laughs> thing? <laughs> from Suffolk. Oh, there we go. Yes, right. yes, yes. <laughs> Can I just say, how did you fit your poppy? By the way, you've done it so well. Really? No. So Dr. Rene did it because I couldn't do it because no, I... the stem is too big on these ones. Yes. Yes, and it can't go through a buttonhole. No. No. So I prefer the older ones.